Hi there, and welcome to another JavaScript Mastery video. GitHub Copilot, artificial intelligence that will take your job. I'm sure you heard about it, or at least seen its robotic face. Yep, that little guy will presumably take your job in the future. Will that really happen, or is Microsoft just really good at marketing this very advanced form of autocomplete? Well, here at JavaScript Mastery, we've got an access to the early beta to GitHub Copilot so that you can find out yourself. We're not just gonna talk about it like most other YouTube channels do. We are going to put it to the test with pure JavaScript, and then we're going to go a step further by testing its knowledge on HTML, React, and even Node. If you enjoy watching our videos, definitely make sure to subscribe and smash that like button. Let's get started. Before we dive into the code, let's just quickly explain what GitHub Copilot actually is. It's a Visual Studio Code extension that auto-suggests whole lines of code or entire functions based on how you code and what you're working on. It's basically a very advanced form of autocomplete. You describe what you want to do in a comment and then Copilot attempts to predict exactly what you want to do. Let me repeat that. You write a comment saying what you want your code to do, and it writes it for you. Kind of scary, right? Copilot generates code recommendations using OpenAI's Codex, an artificial intelligence model based on GPT-3. GPT-3 is the smartest neural network machine learning model in existence. The Codex was trained on billions of lines of open source code from GitHub which allow the model to learn common code patterns. Unlike basic autocomplete, Copilot is capable of creating new output from the code it's learned. It's actually writing new, never before seen code. Artificial intelligence, what's there to worry about, right? Well, for now, enough talking. Let's see how it actually works. To test it out, I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop, and let's call it something like copilot underscore test. I've also opened empty Visual Studio Code window, and we can simply drag and drop our folder in there. Once we're here, I'm going to make this a bit bigger, zoom it in so that you can see everything well, and I'm going to show you what we're actually using. So if I go to extensions and type Copilot, you should be able to see that there is GitHub Copilot extension. If you've gotten access to the early beta, then you simply need to download this, enter the code, and everything is going to work automatically. If you're interested in testing this out yourself, I'm going to leave the link to the early beta down below. If you appreciate that, definitely make sure to smash that like button and leave a comment. Now, let's test it out. First, let's test it out on a pure JavaScript file. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it index.js. Let's try with some small random functions, something like return a random element from an array should do the trick. I'm going to press Control Enter. That's going to give me 10 different solutions I can choose from. And right away, we get function random element. But let's see if we can maybe find something more concise. There we go, function random element, which takes in an array and then returns a random element from that array. Let's accept this solution. In this example, we don't need to export it. So I'm simply going to remove that. Great. Copilot successfully created our first function. Now, let's say that we are lazy enough and we don't want to write our own arrays. So we want to create an array containing random numbers between zero and a hundred. Let's see if the Copilot can do that. It automatically suggested the array name and then it actually created a for loop, which we can call and as you can see, this for loop inserts the numbers from 0 to 100 into this numbers array. Now, let's say that we want to print the array. So let's say print the array. And automatically, it is printed out. And finally, let's say that we want to print a random element from an array. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And GitHub Copilot even created that comment for me, and it's going to autofill it. As you can see, it knew that the random element function existed and that it takes in an array as a parameter. 
Therefore, it automatically pushed our newly created numbers array. That seems great, but is this code actually working? Let's test it out. I open my terminal and I'm going to simply run node index.js. And there we go. It printed an array of 100 elements containing random numbers from 0 to 100 and it printed out number 94. Right now, it's hard to see if 94 is actually in there, so let's decrease this to only 10 random elements and let's rerun the code. As you can see, 21, 34, and there we go. It actually picked the random 34 number from the array. Th that means that our kind of trivial code actually works. This is not all that complicated, but the fact that GitHub Copilot knew exactly which code to write to make these comments work is kind of extraordinary. So we're going to give our Copilot a pass on this test. Now let's test it on a tougher one. Let's say that we want to search for tweets containing a certain phrase. And also we want to like them using the Twitter API client. And I'm going to press enter and see if it's actually going to autofill it. For now, I don't see anything, but I'm going to press control enter and see if there is a solution we want among these 10 solutions. The first one already seems great. It is requiring something from the tweet library and it's setting up a client and it seems like it already knows what this library needs, consumer keys, secrets, and access tokens. It also suggested a random phrase we wanna search for and it seems to be making a get request. So this seems good enough for me. Let's accept the solution. As you can see, this was quite longer than our previous functions. It seems to be importing a library, setting the client, setting the phrase, and then making a get request to search for tweets with that specific phrase. Then it goes over the tweets, sets the like count to zero, and then for each tweet that is not currently like, it increments the like count. We also have some nice console logs. And finally, the post request is the thing that actually adds it to the favorites or likes it. So we don't actually know if this piece of code works or not, but the logic seems all right. One thing to mention is that we told them to use the Twitter API client, but for some reason it decided to use this library instead. We're not gonna test the functionality of this code, but it seemed to do this task quite well. But this medium sized task was done quite well, so Copilot has a pass from me here as well. And finally, I have one last test, which is a funny example. Let's say that we want to find the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. And of course, we also want to write it to the console. So does this AI know the ultimate question of life? Let's find out. I'm gonna press Control Enter. And as you can see, the answer in most cases is just 42. We have a function main with the answer of 42, and we simply console log it. This was just a joke from the popular sci-fi movie where the ultra smart artificial intelligence was asked to answer the ultimate question of life, universe, and everything. Of course, it was much smarter than humans are, so it gave the answer 42, which of course to humans is meaningless, but to it, maybe it means something. And apparently GitHub Copilot also knows the answer, which was funny enough for me to include it in the video. But for now, we've been only warming up. Everybody knows pure JavaScript, right? Let's test Copilot's knowledge on React. I'm going to create a new file called app.jsx. And then inside of there, let's try some React things. We can say import React from React just so it knows what we're doing. And let's try telling our copilot to create a functional component. That should be a pretty easy task to do. And immediately it suggested export default function app. And let's see if it's gonna continue autofilling it. There we go. Although really simple, this code would actually work and render inside of the browser. Now let's try to up the game a bit. Let's try functional react component that uses the use effect hook. And it even suggested something more than we wanted it to do. We can also cycle through the answers to perform async actions. Let's try with that. Export default function app. And I'm going to press the control enter to get more solutions. There we go. The first solution is actually the right one. 
we have the use effect, and then we're calling the dot then, and one more time dot then to get the events, and these seem like GitHub events. So it randomly chose the API we want to fetch the data from. Now, I can already see that this code will not run. Take a few seconds, think about it, and try seeing where the issue is. The problem is that we are never importing use effect. So we either have to import it from the top or we have to say react.useEffect. This was just one small issue that somebody will immediately understand, but it nicely shows that Copilot cannot be used by beginners to write the code for them. They have to do it with a bit of help from the Copilot. And for the last example, we are going to create a functional component. So const component is equal to a functional component like this. And we're going to ask the Copilot to do something inside of it. For example, create a use state hook with values of number and set number. And it actually did it. Now let's use those states by saying create a use effect hook that increments the number every 500 milliseconds. So this is a bit tougher right now. And there we go, one more time, react use effect. And it used the set interval with 500 milliseconds to increment our number. As you can see, it forgot about the dependency array, but if we add a comma, it remembers it. So that part seems to be working great as well. Finally, let's say return a number. And there we go, the number actually got returned. So only with these three comments, GitHub Copilot knew how to use the React use state hook, how to create the use effect and the set interval to increment that number in a proper React way. And finally, it returned the number. If we were to run this code right now, it would definitely work. So the Copilot gets a pass here as well. Now let's close this, go back to our index.js one more time, and let's see if GitHub Copilot knows how to deal with Node.js. We're going to give it just one single test, and that is to create a simple express application. As you can see, it starts off by suggesting to require express, then it initializes the express, which is the correct thing to do, then it even sets the view engine to EJS, which is great. It even sets the static folder. It sets the index route with the app.get and it renders the index page. That's also good. Let's see what else does it want to do. And finally, it starts the server by saying var server is equal to app.listen on the port 3000. There, it sets the host and sets the port. It's missing one last parenthesis, but that got fixed as well. And there we go. Although this code seems a bit older, like using vars, and also for some reason it decided to use the EJS and to set the static folder, this code seems to be fully functional. So GitHub Copilot created a simple express application from scratch. That's going to be a pass as well. And let's give it the final test, which is going to be maybe the simplest one and that's to test if the Copilot knows HTML. So we can say index.html, let's ask the Copilot if it knows how to create the HTML5 portfolio. So we want a simple portfolio. I'm gonna press Control Enter, and let's wait for the solutions. Let's browse through a few. In here we have a lot of links. This seems overly simple. For example, this one, it has the links, images, everything. I'm gonna click accept solution and it looks like it stops in the middle. So let's see if we can actually end it. I'm going to go one more time for the solutions and this seems like the correct ending. This should be the correct HTML page. Now let's reveal it in File Explorer and finally open it in the browser. We got a nice heading that says portfolio there and we have an inaccessible image from LinkedIn with some search button. This doesn't look like something, but the Copilot definitely did create the simplest possible portfolio page. Now, there's one really big problem with this. 
we only clicked our mouse a few times and we haven't even typed anything that we can see here. We didn't type this code out. But for some reason, GitHub Copilot decided to take somebody else's image and links and their entire code technically. So what do you think? If this code is proprietary, who is going to get sued? GitHub Copilot or you for using somebody else's code even without knowing it? Well, the blame is going to be on you. GitHub says that even though this code was suggested to you, you are the one responsible for it. Therefore, you have to be careful which code you use and whether it belongs to somebody else. You've seen what Copilot can do. Now, let's discuss the elephant in the room. Will GitHub Copilot or artificial intelligence in general replace developers? Copilot does not develop a completely functional application for you. You can't, for example, write a comment like develop an e-commerce application and expect Copilot to take care of it. The hard part of programming isn't programming. A magical tool isn't going to change the fact that the value that engineers bring is problem solving and not the coding skills. Humans are creative and software development requires creativity. Programming is a mix of art and science and problem solving requires some deeper thinking than merely generating code in a visual layout. Moreover, comprehending complex requirements to write production level code isn't something AI is ready to do yet in a foolproof way. So even though applications like the Copilot are helpful and super powerful, I still believe we are far from being replaced by them. GitHub Copilot would never kill skilled developers' jobs. If at all anything, it is going to make them more productive. I'm curious to know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. As developers have to stick together now when we are faced with this threat, so definitely hit a like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. I recently activated the JavaScript Mastery mailing list. We have a ton of interesting stuff that I'm sure you're going to love in the close future. So if you want to stay up to date, definitely make sure to join. The link is going to be down in the description. We also added a lot of new stuff to our Discord channel. So make sure to join as well. The link is also in the description. With that said, subscribe so that we can see each other the next time as well. And have a wonderful day.